Greetings. This is The Wolf, and welcome to the Words with Wolf podcast. Online, I am vaguely known as a live streamer, audio editor, voice actor, friendly bully, and emotional supporter. Today, however, I'm here to lurk in your ears and mind. The following files contain two separate recordings on two separate dates, logging my thoughts on those nights. Disclaimer, there are no subjects in this matter of which I have not yet overcome and or gotten myself over already by now. My AI assistant, Dr. Make, will proceed to play the logs. Thank you. Log number one. Recording date 3-23-24. 3 a.m. Um, March 23rd, 24. 2024, I should probably say. Um, I'm not sure why I'm doing this, really. I, I can't sleep, so I just I just pressed record. I started watching through some random videos on YouTube earlier, and and I got to some video reviewing corpse. Corpse husband and his complete rise and fall throughout the entire internet. Um, and it just had me thinking how, man, I, I really, really wish I was that popular. Man, I really, really wish my voice was just a little bit more like his. Um, and I completely understood all of the hate and all of the misery that Corpse has been stuck with for like his entire career on the internet. Um, <clears throat> um, and not only like mentally, but all of his, you know, medical issues as well. I mean, there's a lot of shit that Corpse went through, right? And I always, in the Corpse era, is what I call it, I always felt like I was completely shoved down by his popularity. And I didn't curse him for it or whatever. Like, <clears throat> clearly my voice is not like his, right? I have an okay voice, but my voice fucks up every now and again. My voice doesn't sound natural half the time. Um... And every time I would speak anywhere on the internet, and immediately everyone told me, you sound like Corpse, or stop trying to pretend to be Corpse's husband, or you want to turn off the voice changer, or whatever. I mean, half of that still happens every time I get behind this computer, but... I don't know, it had me reflecting, um... I, I was jealous, 100% I was jealous, um, and I didn't mean to be, and I knew I was, I was completely aware of everything, I always, always was aware of exactly what was going on with me, it's just human emotion that I couldn't get over because I'm, I'm human, um, and eventually I had to reteach myself, hey, like, you are your own person, Right, um, and I'd have to convince myself, hey, there are some things that you can do that even the great corpse can't do, you know, like change your voice to sound like this, or have a different tone, or, or voice act in other different ways, or do my own thing, and, and I it just made me more miserable. <laughs> Because I was aware of the psychological loop that I was putting myself in. And I couldn't stop it because I'm just human, you know? So the more I tried to perk myself back up, the worse I got. Because I, I just completely... I was completely stuck, you know? Like, I, I was... Trapped in a cage, and I knew that I needed a key. I was aware that everything around me was indestructible. I was aware that I just need to 
you know, find a key and unlock myself. And I just couldn't find it or get or make the key. And I don't know why that happened to me. I think and God, I hope after like three, three years or so that I'm over the situation. Maybe I am. But a part of me thinks about this extra hard for no reason, and I think, no, never mind, I'm not. Because I'm stuck sounding like this, and then I have to explain to people, or kind of explain to myself as well, no, this is just what I sound like when I'm not pressuring my voice to explode or exclaim or whatever. Obviously. I have a more normal voice, quote unquote normal voice, than Corpse would have, right? So when I'm yelling or getting louder vocally or something or whatever, it sounds different. So therefore, logically, people would start thinking, oh, you're forcing it, whatever. It got to the point where I knew the truth about myself, but I started kind of believing it. And saying, what if I am kind of unironically forcing this without realizing? But I'm not. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm doing this right now. And I'm trying to just pause and let my voice roll. And I'm feeling myself. Uh, like, I'm fearing, feeling my own throat fuck up and... Feeling the need to clear my throat, but I'm trying not to, just to let myself embrace it, uh, because I'm not perfect. And I'm going to sound like this, maybe, for the rest of my life. And it's not going to change anything about myself, as long as I don't let it, right? Right? Um... I constantly do feel the need to clear my throat or cough or something like that. And it's, it's gotten at, it started all the way, way back when with that trend, or maybe even sooner, I should say, probably a lot sooner, that I felt the need to clear my voice or clear my throat or whatever, just to make it sound more natural. Or make it sound better. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm not that perfect voice. Or perfect person. Or whatever. I don't know. Maybe I feel like I'm like. Recording this now feels like I'm trying to force. Uh, forcefully adjust my voice. And I don't even know if I'm trying to make it deeper. Or trying to make it lighter right now. It's, it's, it's so annoying. Every time I think about it in the slight in the slightest, it just it becomes a conscious thought and it gets stuck to me. And I I I can't get rid of it. I hope to God that I get rid of it. Uh I could get rid of this eventually, but it's just it's always on my mind. Because if you met me in real life and you stood five feet away from me and I had to talk to you from a distance or whatever, I sound completely different, at least in my mind, than how I sound over this microphone right now, when this microphone is, what, five inches away from my face, maybe? Uh, I, I don't know. I, uh, I'm going to edit this together and probably get rid of some of the pauses, but... I don't know. I don't know. This this has been an issue. It was worse before, and I've gotten better with it. I've dealt with, you know, dealt with the worst of it, I think. I think. Yeah, but even if I did, then, you know, it's still there. It's still a problem that I'm dealing with. <sighs> I'm trying not to like swallow my own saliva.
just to make sure everything's as natural as it can be. But that's something that I can do regardless, right? Because that's what humans do, is swallow naturally when they're talking for a while, right? That's... I think so. I hope so. I mean... Yeah. <sighs> I... <laughs> Log number two. Recording date, 5-18-24. My name, my internet name that I've given myself is Wolf. Online, I have a channel labeled The Wolf Fang Productions. It's been labeled that for as long as I can remember since I was pretty little. And I've always gone by the nickname Wolf, and I think that at least that nickname is for a good reason. But regardless, my name is Wolf, and I am giving up. I hope you're curious enough to know why it is I'm giving up, because I'm about to tell you. I've had this expectation for myself. This expectation to grow much quicker than I probably should be expecting for myself. I've had this expectation to grow in public speaking or on the internet as a streamer or a video creator or something online or something for people to be noting. And it never truly happened. Not in the way that I would like. Definitely not in the pace that I would like. I say about maybe eight years or so, I've been looking at the internet, looking at something like YouTube or maybe Twitch or something as a platform for me to grow on. And I never got the traction that I wanted. Never. Granted, I'm only 20 years old, so maybe, hell, I'm speaking way too early, right? But it's just not enough. Why isn't it enough? I don't know. I, I have no idea. I am stuck in this cycle in my head that won't stop. This cycle of expectations, this cycle of wanting to push myself to be something greater, expecting the best of myself, and seeing the potential in myself, yet I just can't reach it. I mean, I, I, I have this desire to push myself forward, to become something greater, and I just never, never can push myself to be that greater person. Maybe I'm just judging myself too harshly. Maybe I'm being too pessimistic. Maybe I'm not patient enough. <laughs> it's funny, I always found myself to be the most patient with people. For the first three quarters of my life, at least. I used to be a person who was insanely calm, cool, collected, and... Well, maybe I still am that person, but I'm not as... Maybe caring isn't the right word. I'm not as soft as I used to be. I'm not as gentle as I used to be. And I can't even tell if I have good reason or not for that. When I was younger, I used to be such a soft-hearted kid. And, you know, life came around and things changed. And I just... Either way, I never grew traction for myself. I never got enough passion to push myself more. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure what it is, this, this feeling that I'm stuck with. But, hell, as I'm recording this, it's 2.25 a.m. I work tomorrow. I should be getting up early. I, I, I just, I can't. 
Maybe that's the problem. Maybe it's my sleep cycle. Maybe... Maybe it's something to do with that. Or maybe I haven't prayed enough. <laughs> my family is a Christian family after all. At least I, I think they are. Seems like we've all strayed from our origins. Regardless, I, uh... I have a few great people around me. And I have a lot of things to be grateful for. But I just cannot give back to them. And I can't... I can't give back to myself. Maybe it's something that I'm missing emotionally. Or maybe it's something that I'm missing mentally. Maybe you're not even sure what I'm talking about either. I'm, I'm not. I'm not sure. I don't know what I'm talking about. Like I said, I don't know what this feeling is, right? All I know is I haven't gotten anywhere. I feel like I haven't gotten anywhere. And I've lived with a pretty good consciousness in my life for at least 10 years. I've always been a very mature kid. At least I like to think that of myself. Hell, I've, I've always been that young kid who was hanging around the older kids or even the adults just for the hell of not being around other kids my age because they were just way too annoying or way too broad or just not mature enough for me. And maybe that damaged me in some way too. When I was about 16, my voice started cracking majorly and... I started shouting more like this, and uh, something like that. I started questioning myself. Not because others were questioning if it was real, but... I don't know. Maybe I was pushing myself to be something that I wasn't. At least that's what I thought. This voice that you're hearing now, it's, it's just me. Close enough to the mic to relax my throat, and... This has been one of the major things that I've always been judged by, whether it be good or bad, immediately, because it's the one thing that you notice about me first. Not my face, not my short hair, not, not my personality, maybe, I don't, I don't think so, but my actions and my stature and my voice. You know, I'm, I'm working, I've always been working customer service so far, and that's the first thing people notice about me immediately. I get a lot of questions. Is that your real voice? Why is your voice like that? Is there a condition that you have? Is there something going on with you? When did your voice get like that? <laughs> it's kind of tiring to answer these types of questions. Half the time I don't even bother answering them anymore. I just dismiss the conversation in general because I'm just so tired of it. But hey, I can't complain. I mean, Corp's husband is dealing with a million times worse out there somewhere, wherever he is right now. <laughs> if you don't know who that is, then do some research. Corp's husband, he's a, he's a great content creator. At least he was. I liked him. But to be honest, I also hated him a little bit, only slightly. Maybe hate is a strong word, but you get the point. But everyone always says the same thing. You could be a radio host. You could be a voice actor. You could be a singer. You could be this. You could be that. I couldn't be a single one of those things. You know why? Because I wasn't feeling myself. I wasn't passionate enough. I never have been. I felt this passion. I felt those those nightly hours of, hey, I could do this. Hey, here's an idea. Hey, here's this potential plan. Here's this and that. And I just never got through with it. Maybe I started with some of these projects, but I would never, I would never finish them. I, mean, I just couldn't get it out. I've, uh, about Two years ago, I started working out, quote-unquote. <laughs> if you could even call it that, because I don't have a regular routine, to be honest. I've more been experimenting with my own body in ways and seeing what, what could be done and what couldn't be done. 
And hell, nowadays I uh, I own a bench a bench press, up to two hundred pounds on that thing that I can lift. Uh, I guess that's something for someone who's barely six foot and probably one eighty nine, one eighty seven in weight. I, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't remember the last time we ever measured my weight. I, I I'd say it's decent, but it's not enough, is it? No, it's not enough. Never was for me. I've always wanted to get bigger. I've always wanted to get stronger. I've always wanted to look better. And you know, most of the time I use that as a motivation in a good way, but sometimes it's a bit much. Some people call it body dysmorphia, but I, I guess looking at myself in the mirror or Constantly comparing myself to the next man that I see in front of me and looking at my own arm sizes. It's not just body dysmorphia, it's something else. It's not just the physical aspects of it either, it's the mental or personality aspects that I compare myself to others with for no reason. I think I'm a decent person, I think. I, God, I hope I'm, I'm a decent person, I, I really do. Some of me tells me that I am, but some of me just questions in. Regardless, it's something that I don't think I should be questioning, but here I am. Doing exactly that. You know, maybe you could relate to something like that, or maybe you couldn't. Some of you, whoever would ever be listening to this, if you are listening to this, probably have no idea what I'm talking about, really. Or maybe you do, maybe you think you do, or maybe you even know more than me about myself. I'm giving up. I'm giving up a lot of this emotion that I've been stuck with. You know, my family's not perfect. God, I love them all. God bless them all. But of course, no one is perfect, right? And I have all these people in my family that I, I want to make proud. And I have some of these people that I want to be not better than, but someone that they can be proud of being an example for. Yeah, I don't want to mention any personal business for my family. But some people do bad things and then I'm expected not to be like that. And some people teach me certain things and I'm expected to reach out and grow under those paths that they make for me, I guess. Maybe that's just something that I'm <laughs> struggling with because of my own ridiculous mindset. Maybe I'm not getting any expectations like that at all. I have no idea. Maybe I'm recording this whole thing for no reason. I might just scrap this entire audio file by the time I'm done with it. Or maybe I'll get through this audio file and probably edit it halfway through, maybe even three quarters of the way through and just think, this is fucking stupid. And not in a miserable way. It's not something that I want to be pitied for or something that I want to be patted on the back for and told it's okay. It's something that I just, I want to just get over. It's not something that I want to be looked at and, and thought of. <laughs> Never mind. I'm a kid who's insecure about his body, insecure about just how tough he really is. But I'm also insecure about how tough I am mentally. I mean, some people on the internet, bleh, Sad to say, but some people on the internet know me better than anyone else that I would know in real life. Regardless, those people that know me best here online are usually telling me that I'm one tough motherfucker. At least personality-wise or mentally, as far as they can see. And this is not me saying, oh, but I'm a softie on the inside. No, no. I mean, I can be gentle and I probably do have a pretty warm heart probably still do. I think I still do. I'm fairly sure that I still do. 
What I'm not sure of is, is this even really me? I have a friend who's struggling with uh, some major anxiety. He's a great guy. I love him to death, probably more than he even knows. And there was a point where I really feel like I could have done more for him. Not that there's anything wrong with him, and he's perfectly okay today. But I just I feel like I've owed him more than I've given. And he would probably look at me and say, like, what the fuck are you talking about? You don't owe me shit. And I think we have had a conversation like that before. But I don't know. It just feels like I do owe him something. Even though we're just casual friends who haven't, like, done anything really from each other except for be a good friend. I have another friend. Uh, <laughs> you'll know exactly who she is immediately if she were to listen to this. She's a toughie. Um, probably one of my best friends on here. And I love her to death. We, uh... We give each other shit all the time, anytime we're talking. It's, it's great. We, uh, it's kind of just our thing. I look up to her. Maybe she looks up to me a little bit, too, because of our different personalities clashing so much and inspiring each other, maybe. Or maybe, maybe I'm thinking too far ahead and maybe I'm not all that to her. Uh, regardless. <laughs> Back to the matter is, uh, her toughness inspired me. But at the same time, it also also reminded me just how overly tough I was being. I'm not her. I'm, I'm me. I shouldn't try to duplicate the same level of personality that someone else has. I've got someone else in my life that, uh, that I care for a lot more than she will ever understand. She's a beautiful, beautiful human being. She knows I love her so much, but does she really? <laughs> yeah. Um, she's someone that I want to be there for every moment that I can be. I feel like giving to her is rewarding to me, just like anyone else would be for me at least, but even more so. I, I love giving to people. It makes me feel really good. It, Feels like I have a good purpose when I give to other people, or where I'm being that one therapeutic friend, or just being that ear for someone to listen to. It feels good to be doing good for other people, and I love that about myself, I think. Regardless, for her, it's even more. So much more than I want to give to her. And maybe I'm just being impatient, but there's so much more that I want to give to her and other people that I just feel like I can't quite give enough. I don't think I owe anyone anything, really. Not in that term, at least. Not in that manner, but I just want to give. I want to be there. I look at people like <laughs> what's a good example? Mr. Beast, all nine. He's someone that grew very, very widely on the internet and, uh, became super rich and all that. I've always dreamed of being someone like that, you know, someone who would just give to people to make them happy, someone who would give to the, the friends that I have, make them happy, provide them what help that they need, and watch them grow further. But again, this goes all the way back to where I was before, my pace, my growth. No one even knows who I am. Why is that? Maybe you think you know who I am. Maybe you do. But if I don't see that you do, or if I don't think that you do, then what good does it do me or my mentality? I hate being dramatic, and I hate seeking attention in the way of pity, or feeling bad, or seeking sympathy, or empathy, whatever. And I don't think, or at least I hope I'm not putting this out for that. I hope not. I don't even know. 
but I just want more. I want to be more so that I can therefore give more. I owe my life to some people. Maybe not literally. Or maybe literally. Just want to give. So, since I haven't grown quite as much as I would have liked in this amount of time, whether it may be me being impatient as fuck or something else, I'm giving up. I'm giving up my hopelessness. I want to be more positive towards myself. And maybe it sounds cheesy, but I'm giving up my, my fears. I always thought I was scared of nothing, but I guess I'm scared of not living up to my full potential. That's a fear I never realized I had. So I want to give up that hopelessness. I just really hope I can. For myself, for others, and for God, I mean, <laughs> that's someone I still believe in. I think. Giving up my hopelessness. I really want to push further. And so I'm leaving this log as a memory for myself. And maybe, just maybe, I'll leave this somewhere for other people to hear as well. Expose myself a little bit more. Show that I am not quite as solid and tough as some people might think I am. Here I go again thinking that I'm turning to a way of seeking pity or something when I'm trying to convince myself that I'm not. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. Hell, who knows? My name online is Wolf. I want to be loyal. I want to be strong. I want to lift the rest of my family up. No matter who they are. Where they are. I'm a wolf. That's what my grandfather said at least. End of recording.